Good evening, you're listening to Eagles on Air through the Sporting Area and Stream. And tonight it's myself, Steve, and we have Ben. Uh, so just the two of us tonight, what's the first thing on the agenda, Ben? Uh, let's start with the lineup. And do you agree with the players that you picked against Wolves? Um, I gotta say, I was I was very disappointed in the lineup, um, purely on the basis that yet again another home game where going into a game with no attacking um, ambition, not, not not one bit of ambition really to take the game to Wolves. Who, who let's, let's be honest, they've had a real patchy season, and you know they haven't replaced Yotta. Um, you know that's that's massively apparent. They bought a couple of young kids. Um, they've got that kiddie on loan that they've just taken uh, as well. Y- Jose, I think is William Jose, um, and the other kiddie up front. I think it's just eighteen. Um, it's quite. He looks quite weak really on the ball, but he'll he'll improve. But I think without Jota and and without Jimenez. Uh, they're, they're a different side altogether. And, and I've shown that the results that they've made so far have been very patchy overall. So I, I just felt that we we would be a little bit more attacking in our mindset, especially on the ball. And I think when we got the ball, we're just in the same thing. We just kept going back again. And, you know, to, to end the game with two shots on target... I just think it's unacceptable. You can never tell for me so far this season, other than the game against Leeds, who's the home team? You can't tell. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Uh, I don't know what you did to get in the team, really. Uh, Bashway obviously scored against West Ham. So I sort of understood that. Uh, I was a bit lost to why Venteke didn't feature. Mateta didn't even get any minutes. A bit strange. I thought PVA had a, had a pretty good game at the back. A lot of people were delighted with the result and said we looked fantastic, but I just didn't think that Wolves offered anything. I think Wolves really sat behind the ball. Uh, I think that played into into our hands. Um, given the fact it's the third time we played them this season as well, I I thought that and we know them quite well. We we know that side. We know what what's needed and. I don't think we adapted at all. Hodgson just sat there and he'd done his usual story. Same tactic. Out, off you go, boys. You know, give, give it give it, a, you know, a go. But with that defensive man, mentality still uh, at the heart of their mindset. I mean, countless amounts of times Wilf got the ball. Apart from when he got through in the first half um, and in the second half when it was two on two and he cut inside and hit the crossbar. Other than that, each time he got the ball, he just turned around and passed it straight back. I just think, I've said it before, you know, I think I said it in the last show possibly, but I just think Hodgson is stifling the life out of some of our players. And, you know, the more attacking players like Wilf and Eze, he's totally the wrong manager to be having, you know, coaching these players or giving them guidance because the guidance he's giving is just it's just the polar opposite is what's needed we we looked a bit lost didn't we really we didn't I don't I I was so frustrated honestly I don't think I've ever felt like that with a win in all of my life I should have been over the moon three points it's nice to get a snatch and grab victory if you like that's what it felt like it was anyone's game whoever scored probably took the game which, which it happened but apart from that it was oh I think I had my head in my phone after the game it was honestly it just it turned me off completely um, the player selection I looked at and just thought what is going on uh, you've got Townsend on the bench who's, who's a winger and, it, and we just like, keep playing players out of position it's infuriating Ben Teke I, I think has been good most of the season alright he hasn't scored but he, he does bring a lot to the team. Well, given the fact that he brings a lot to the team, given the fact that the Wolves' defence hasn't been great this season, uh, apart from Roman Sias, who potentially might leave, um, it, it, it appears that you know some of these players look at Wolves as a kind of stepping stone uh, to, to move on. 
Yeah, fair enough. By the by, and he does look a quality defender. But I think I can't remember the name of the the other defender they had. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, but he he, I felt like he made quite a few mistakes. I felt like he he didn't really look like he had gelled with with size. Well, I, I think that they were there for the kill. Their, their form's been horrific. Okay, you can argue my form's not been fantastic, but I just I, I just wanted to see some good football. I wanted to see... Uh, uh, Maxim- Maximilian gonna... Kilman, that was the one. Um, yeah. And I, I, <laughs> I don't know, I actually felt that... I actually felt, even though Cody got the ball on, on that challenge to Zaha, I actually felt that he... Um, he, he got he got a bit of wilf as well, yeah, yeah. and it could have gone either way because we've seen with we've seen with um, a lot of the decisions on VAR. You know, you call it, you look at it, and you think that's that's going to go our way, and then it doesn't, and then another match, a similar sort of thing happens, and it don't go your way. Um, I I think he he definitely got. Wilf, but like you say, he he hundred percent got the ball. I was watching it with a power. Oh yeah, he got the ball. He did get the mm. ball, but he got he got he got Wilf as well a little bit. But you have seen them given this season, and you have seen them not given. I, I think there was a a lot more passion. I think Milivojevic probably had one of his best games in in a shirt for us in a long, long time. I think he's breaking up the play was superb. He's passing. Not so good, but he he did break up a lot of a lot of their play, which is pretty much what he's there for. But Gyro being number three is is very distasteful. As, as soon as Gyro came on, he changed the dynamic of the game, and he, he's done that so many times this season. He, he's sat there, he's waited, he's come on, the dynamics changed, and then everyone's lauded over the fact of what he's done. Everyone said, "Oh, you've had an absolute blinder." And what happens the next match? He gets dropped again. It, it doesn't make. I, I'd love to. I'd love to hear what Hodgson says. I'd love to hear what he sees because what we all see as fans, I don't think he. I don't think he sees one ounce of what we see. It's just this week you've been my mate. This week you're in. But he, he even turned around. I think it was um, before the game, and. The the team sheet was was sort of queried with him, and he said, "Oh, I think Jordan and and Batshuayi have been quite patient, and they deserve their chance this week." Well, maybe so, but I'm a believer in play your best team, and yeah. and equally, what's the point in going out and getting a striker because we said we can't score goals because Benteke struggled. Yes, he picked up three goals. Um, and has done well and has played well. But I just think we need to go back to 4-4-2 and have two people up front, have two wingers, Wilf down one side, Townsend perhaps on the other, one defensive midfielder. Just scrap the two defensive midfielders because it's all you're doing is each game, you're just saying, look, whoever you're playing, you them come at us. Yeah. Come at us because all we're going to do is just... We're just going to defend against you. We're just going to hold you. We're just going to hope that we can counter-attack you and we can then score. But as we said last week, don't matter how many times we counter-attack, we are not clinical. So we've gone out to buy someone to change that. And he didn't come in the first game because apparently there was a, a, a bit of a balls up with the, the paperwork. Yeah. But don't come out and say, oh, yeah, he'll be in the squad and he'll get minutes. Um, if you ain't got any intention of playing it, well, what's the point? It's a, a complete waste of everyone's time. Uh, and he wasn't carrying an injury. All the videos that Crystal Palace Twitter, um, the actual official account was was uh, showing, he looked proper sharp. He looked like yeah. he looked like he was well up for uh, an opportunity. So I, I, I honestly don't know what goes through Hodgson's mindset at times. I don't. I don't understand how he chooses the players because if you've got people on form, Mitchell on form, all right, listen, at the end of the day, PVA had a really good game, a strong game, and one of his strongest for a long time. Um, 
it looked a bit suspect. It could be harsh to say um, that, you know, once Troy came on. But Troy has been unreal this season anyway. Um, and think... against, any, against any defender, you, you, they're always going to struggle, especially with his pace. Yeah, Troy sort of had him in his pocket a little bit. But I remember just, I, I think it was only 10 minutes in, and I said to a friend of mine, PVA fancies this guy. He looked. He looked like he wanted it. Um, Performance-wise, was you was you satisfied? But listen, I, I'm I'm happy with any win. I'll take any win. Three points is priceless to a club like us. Am I happy with the way we played? No, because like I said, I, I, you can't tell who was the home side. You can't tell who. I mean, if anything. You could have looked at that game. Thought Wolves was the home side. Yes, yes, we contained them. Yes, they didn't really do a lot, but it just looked like it just looked like we were playing away and not bothered. I, I, at home, it's 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 been a massive problem for us for seasons now. We just always seem to struggle at home and just have some fabulous wins away at times. But at home, that, I want to see a season where we make that make that that stadium our fortress, and just didn't really feel it. And yeah, again, it was just another poor performance. Uh, luckily for us, Wolves Wolves were were you know not not at the party really. Well, I I tweeted up about it and said if we play like that in the next five games, we're going to come a bit unstuck because I think. The teams that we've got coming up have got more about them to punish us. The problem we've got, Ben, is that we, we can't keep playing like this and hoping that we we steal a one nil win here or there, or we um nab a goal just and, and, and then and then think that we can hold it out. I mean the two substitutions that we brought on, uh Gyro, as I said, he he should have been starting. Yeah. I don't agree at all with, with what Hodgson's doing with him. Um, and bringing on Ward for Klein, I mean, I don't know if he picked up an injury, but it didn't look like he had. Um, just seemed to be a really odd thing to do. I, I, uh, if you've got no intention of bringing Mateta on, I would have bought on Ben Teke and thought, come on, mate, let's just give yeah. them a bit of a problem for the last sort of 10 minutes or so to think about up front and maybe nab a second goal or, you know, just give ourselves that opportunity to do that. Well, with Ben Teke, whenever we get a long ball up the pitch, you know pretty much nine times out of ten he's going to bring it down, he's going to bring others into play. And I think we really do miss that. I mean, maybe not in the against balls. We didn't we didn't oof it so much up the pitch. It was it was more pace, um, passing based. But realistically, possession just means absolutely zero to me. And when people are like, oh, we have all this possession, yeah, but all that really matters is if you put a ball in on it. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, I don't think we can carry on as a club hoping that we get the two or three, four opportunities at best that we, we seem to be getting, especially at home, because it's almost as if you've got to have some ridiculous conversion rate to guarantee yourself a win. You know, two, two shots on target... We had a fifty percent conversion because we scored, and it's like yeah. it just—I don't know—it just doesn't make sense to me. Because if you're attacking a team, no matter who you're attacking, no matter who you're playing, they are thinking about you. They've got to defend against you. They've got to stop doing what they're doing and try and contain you. If you're sitting back and saying, "Come on, we're gonna we're gonna sit here for eighty-five minutes." It's the, it's the opposite end of the spectrum. And then you, you end up getting walloped 4 0 by Man City and 4 0 by Chelsea and 7, you know, 7 against Liverpool. It's just, it's soul destroying to watch us play like that. Well, it's interesting you mentioned Man City. I watched the interview with Hodgson after the Wolves game and he mentioned about Man City and he seemed to have got his feathers ruffled, so to speak, because. He, he kept mentioning about the Wolves, uh, about the uh, Man City and the West Ham game. Oh, West Ham are doing well at the minute and, and Man City have got quality all over the pitch and we nearly held them to a, a nil-nil at half-time and it was a couple of mistakes. But realistically, 
you just think it's a lot worse. When you watch these games, you just think, I think you're being a bit kind. I just, I don't see any passion from Hodgson as a manager. You know, if you compare him to other managers of other clubs, you know, you've got Mourinho running up and down the, up the line, you've got Klopp coming on, you've got all these players, that re- uh, all these managers, sorry, that are really, really, really sort of, you've got the spirit there, you've got the collaboration and they're really pushing their players to get every last bit out of them. You know, and I just think if if it is not coming from the top, how can you, how can you yeah, basically, um, what's the word? Um, transfer it to the pitch. Well, transfer it to the pitch. But, you know, at half time, how many times do we go in behind? Mm. You know, how many, how, I've lost count the amount of times we've, we've gone in, we look dejected, our heads are on the floor. And it's, how, how are you going to encourage, how are you going to pull the players up? I just don't see it from him as a manager. Well, the same sort of interview stream that I watch had uh, Cahill on it, discussing that we can't keep throwing away half half a game, not only showing up half a game, and then he doesn't feature in this game. So I don't know if he got a bit of a slap on the wrist for that one. Uh, you're a man of the match, if there was one. For me, uh, it was a toss-up between uh, Klein and PVA. Uh, PVA had his best game for us for a long time, and you know he, he, he won't pacify his haters. Um, I, I actually like PVA. I, I think he's a good player. I think he's a bit suspect against pace, but the irony is actually when he's going forward, he equally causes you know the the opposing team problems. It could be a small argument to say that we should play him on the wing as opposed to left back and put Mitchell behind him, but it's a difficult one because obviously Will's on the left, so you either switch him or you put him up front. But I, I, you know, when he has got the ball and he's running with it, he's he's he's, he's pretty decent. To be fair, it's just the tracking back that that, that he falls down on. Uh, well, but when he's, when he's played under other managers, he's, he sees the bag sort of four or five a season. But we're just not seeing enough of it, really. Like you say, going forward, I've got no issues with him at all. I fancy him. If he and his link up play with Wilf is normally sublime. When he's the thing is for me, when he's playing, when he starts, and we get a free kick that's on, you know, on the right right foot for him, he should be taking the free kicks because he scored a few for us. He looks dangerous. You know what drives me insane is we had three. Well, there was three free kicks that Luca pushed Eze out of the way from. And given the fact that he can't even beat the first man on, on a corner, and he just seems to, for some reason, since he had a few good goals for us, free kick-wise, every time he takes a free kick, he just hits the wall. So he, he, needs, to, he needs to take some ownership to that. He needs to say, hang on a second, guys. I'm, Not good enough. I'm struggling with my set plays. Yes, I'm captain. But he needs to take a step back and say, look, I need to let Eze, you know, Eze's, Eze's free kicks have been have been class. His set plays have been class. He beats the first man on a corner. He causes problems. So sh- surely Lucas should be looking at it thinking, yeah, I think I need to step back a little bit and let this let this lad take them for a while. Yeah, that one that he, that he gave to Wilf was a, was a bit bloody wayward, wasn't it? Yeah, just it, it it just doesn't make any sense to me. But I don't know. I just I mean, if you look across the team this season, I'm really seeing a lot of passion, a lot of kind of drive, a lot of desire from the whole the whole team as you know overall. Um, I'm 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 absolutely itching for a change at the top. I think we I think we need it so badly now. Um, and given the fact that we'd only had one win in ten games prior to the Wolves game. You know, it just seems like every time the pressure starts to mount, we win a game and we kind of save him some more time. Yeah, pay over the crack, so to speak. Well, I talked to one of my pals, uh, who's an Arsenal fan, and he was saying to me about um, Jordan, Simon Jordan, talking about us linked to Lampard. And to be honest, I've not really given it that much thought, but when you do think about it, we want a manager in that's going to play youngsters, 
that's going to bring them through the team. What did he do at Chelsea? He's done just that. He's linked to Chelsea with the youngsters. He could pull them in. So if that's what we want and he's available, what are we doing? Well, this is the thing. We, we can't keep... I mean, I've got loads of people, loads of Palace mates, loads of little groups and stuff that I'm in and, and, and whatnot, but I've lost count of the amount of people that said we need to keep Hodgson, we need to give him another year, we need to... And they defend him to the hilt. I don't want to be negative, but his style, his, his play, the way that he does things, you know... Encourage it, he doesn't encourage any of the players. It's, it's, it's just unforgivable because eight seasons into the Premier League, you, you, you would have thought there would be a, a premonition to say, Come on, guys, let's try it. Let's try getting the top 10. Let's try and do something with this squad. And I think the squad that we've got, yes, there's got a lot of old players in there, but I think it's the best squad that we've had so far. Um, we don't know what Mateta is going to be like. We no one can really comment. We don't know if he's going to perform. And quite often, you've seen these these players come over from Europe and struggle. You know, um, you'd hope that he's going to put the ball in the net and really prove his worth. But you know, we've got to have that ambition to improve. I mean, look at Burnley. You know, they do it every year. I mean, they they had a European campaign. And, and, and we should be looking at the similar things. Burnley are no bigger than us as a club in, in the big scheme of things. I think we're pretty similar, given the fact they've been taken over and they've got a lot of money to spend now. Um, that might that might take them up the food chain a little bit more. Aston Villa, got a massive stadium. They are a big club. They spent a lot of money. got really rich owners. Um, I'm not jealous by any fact. You know, fair play to them. But it'd just be nice if we showed a bit of ambition. And if we've got this well, Academy yeah. One, you know, youth set up, start utilising it. Well, even the likes of Leeds spent money. West Ham, yeah, we all forget that West Ham were up in arms beginning of the season about no transfers. That they weren't happy with the people that own a club. And where are they sat now? Oh, they sat in fifth. They got they bought Ben Rama. They got Jared Bowen. Uh, you know they've got um, Cichek. They 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 bought some quality players. Um, yeah, they're not massive household names, but it doesn't matter because yeah, a lot of these true. players are, are, are relatively young and want to make a name for himself. And that and that's the point I keep saying about Palace. How you set up the under 18s smashing the league to bits that they're in. Well, if they're that good, why, why, why can't we look at bringing a few of them in? Yeah, no, I agree. If they're, if they're ready to play, and they've, they've obviously got that confidence behind them being top of the league, then they, they should definitely get a chance. I think we should look at cup games, really, really alter the team to a, a younger team, if I'm honest, if, if we want to do that. But I just think that Frank... Frank Lampard would offer Palace a lot. Frank yeah. Lampard would offer us a, a, a massive, massive... Um, it, it would be a massive kind of push in terms of the feelings within the fans. It would bring, back, bring a, good, a good feel factor, I think, because he does invest in you if he does give them a chance. And he has been able to attract some decent players, be it they haven't gelled, be it he's assembled a squad at Chelsea that... It's too many players. Um, I think he needed a bit of a clear out, to be fair, because uh, a lot of them aren't going to get game time. But at Palace, I think he do, uh, do an amazing job. And, and he's still young. With, with Mattel, say we, we put him on, at a minute we're struggling to create chances and shots. So is that going to change if he is on the pitch? Because there's obviously an issue somewhere that is stopping us from creating chances. I think um, I just think you nailed it earlier, and we said it last week. Hodgson, all he wants to do is put. It's like he wants to push the, these players to be playing in positions that don't, a don't suit their style, b don't suit the way that they play, 
and, and, and see it just doesn't fit within the Palace team. And you see it so often. I mean, what he did to Max Meyer was horrific. You know, it, it was like he literally tried to force the guy to be a left winger, and he's never a left winger. And he's trying to do the same thing with Eze. He's trying to force him to be a winger. And all he needs to do is to sit behind the front player or the front two players, whoever Odson decides, all the while he's manager, that's up front, and just say, play with freedom, mate. Show him what you've got. I want to see pace. I want to see quality runs. I want to see passion. But I also want to see you, I also want to see you coming back when you lose the ball. That's all he's got to say. Rather than the other way around, which it just seems to be with, well, I want to see you, 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 your first mentality, your disposition needs to be defensive. We Go need to backwards. make sure that we're solid. Mm. Well, that's all good and well. You can be as solid as you want. But if you can't score and you can't create any chances, you can't win games. And, and there's a massive difference, be it, you know, quite blatantly obvious between three points and one point or no points. You know, and we've jumped from 23 points to 26 points. And, we, and, the, and the next five games that we've got could be absolutely pivotal with our season. But we, yeah. can't, we can't keep saying to these players, when you get the ball, go back. Yeah. Well, and if he's, if he's not saying it, something's falling down massively. Because every time they do get the ball, the vast majority of play seems to come back. And it, it doesn't make any sense to me. And and I'm you know watching all of these games, all of these these sides, and it, it just appears like we seem to be the most negatively defensive team in the league. Yeah, some it's not right. If you're averaging pretty much two shots a game, it's. It, I, I mean, I don't think any of the top six would probably score two out of two. Um, so you, you're limiting yourself, really. I mean, I, he did change the tactics for the Wolves game. Didn't he play as a in the cam roll for, for a little bit of the game? I, 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 I don't even know. When I, when I look at these games, I don't even know what we're playing as a tactic. It just seems to be a blanket approach. Just keep it tight. Don't lose the ball. You know, it, we don't even press half the time. You know, and when we do press, it's like we press too much and then we leave a big space behind us. It, it just doesn't make sense what we do. Um, and I just think we're just relying on the fact that we just shit out a win <laughs> every so often. <laughs> that just seems to be what it is. It's just like, I mean, the game against West Ham where we lost 3-2, I mean, 3-2 sounds like it was a really tight game. But yeah. it wasn't. No. It was far from it. They absolutely ran us ragged. And Antonio is a top, top player. Top draw. He was, he was so unlucky not to score in the night. But they, they could have had five or six against us if they'd have converted all the chances they had. Yeah, our defending. If you compare it... The problem is, compare, comparing it to the Wolves game, it's like comparing chalk and cheese. Wolves offered... Absolutely zero, whereas West Ham were constantly knocking at the door. So comparing them is, is completely out of shape. That's why I'm saying that if we play like that against a team like a West Ham, I think I even tweeted a guy saying if we'd have played West Ham again, the scoreline probably would have been the same again because Wolves just didn't offer anything going forward. That it, that, I mean, there was a couple of chances, but I'd like to say that both teams had two shots on target. That's, that, that was the story of the game, really, just... A game of nothingness, and and we managed to to get the three points. But we really need to kick on from this. We really need to put that behind us. Go with the confidence now, and and try and enjoy playing football again. Because I I really don't think I could watch that sort of football week in week out. <laughs> uh, he's, that was painful. No, it's just driving me absolutely insane to see us playing like that. And it's just like, as I said, especially with the fact we're at home. You know, you got you got to be trying to put the team to the sword that you're playing against. You know, and yeah, I'm grateful for the win. Absolutely grateful. You know, you can't beat a feeling of winning and getting those three points. But we never seem to make it easy. 
It just seems it's to be seems, seems to be such an ordeal to make it make a game um, or go into a game and just basically be convictive in terms of the way that we 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 convert our chances and just put a game to bed. It just seemed like two, well, I suppose it was two teams in really poor form fighting for a relegation. If you'd have watched that game and someone turned around and said to you, these two at the bottom of the table, you'd have gone, yeah, I can take that. And and that's sort of how it panned out. Um, players, well, with the transfers, it seems like we're not going to bring anyone in. Damari Gray, I think we absolutely missed the gem there. I, I really can't get my head around that at all. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, so it will have to be on to player contracts and nailing players down. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you on the Damari Gray at £2 million, 24. Got a point to prove, fallen by the wayside. So he definitely, definitely needs to prove himself. Uh, to allow a player, I mean, it could be, it could have been purely down to wages. We could have been in for him, but nothing was really said. But to allow a player like that, especially at that price, to slip through your grasp, I, I just think it's absolutely criminal how we've, you know, we're a London club. We can guarantee him first team football. We can guarantee him that he'll start. I'm flabbergasted that we couldn't even sign a player like him. Um, well, we're losing Townsend. His, his contract's up. Schlopp's injured. And there's a winger out there in the Premier League that plays for Leicester City that is proven, but he's not been given time and we let him slip. I, I just don't get it. Yeah, and it, we keep banging on about how we haven't got any money. It's a bit of a struggle. Every transfer window is a struggle because we've made a lot of that problem ourselves with the with the wage um, situation. But given the fact that there's a lot of players that are probably going to go, um, I just don't really know why we couldn't have offered something to Damari Gray. You know, and even even if he signed for us, even if he signed for us and we were paying him hundred grand a week or something like that, or whatever it turned out to be, give him a four year contract, it doesn't work out. You're gonna make some money on him. It's an absolute well, given that you will. Have we not got a poll? Was it was he not interested? Maybe we did have interest, but to go all the way over to Germany just seems ludicrous to me. You live in England, you come to London. You'll be on fairly decent money. I just I don't see how we we can't rope a player like that in. No, it's um it is a bit worrying if you look at it from that perspective. You know, if if we've not got the attraction to players to want to come to us, especially if you know, if you look if you if you're looking at our squad from outside, and that position is pretty much apparent that it's it's going to be an opportunity to fill. Especially, especially if Townsend does go, which you know his contract's going to finish, you w- you would imagine that you know it's a big opportunity there that that could really pull you. But Bayer Leverkusen over over Palace. I mean, the only thing I can think of is I, I, I don't know where Leverkusen are, but I think they're in the top four, aren't they? So it, it yeah, could simply be Champions League football that's enticed them or the opportunity of it. Yeah, which, uh, which of course we can't clearly compete with. Yeah, definitely. Um, Goya, we talked about a little bit before we started the show. Um, I believe that he's going. The talk is that he's going to Sociedad. Um, so, if that's the case, why is Butland not given a jersey? If Goya wants to get out, I know he's a fantastic keeper. He's done us well. Um, there was reports before he came over uh, the year before that he was trying to get out of it, that he wasn't really happy. But he's done in, he's done his service, he's done his contract, so to speak. I don't think there'll be any ill feeling. But if he is going, then surely we need to get Butland in between the sticks as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, is Butland as good as Gaeta? Not sure. Uh, the old Butland... Absolutely, um, you know, he's, he's definitely fallen by the wayside. I was, I was surprised that we got him, and I was surprised that we got him so cheaply, uh, and that we were even in for him. So, I, I personally, uh, the old Butland, that's a fantastic transfer for us. 
inspiring him. And it's, it's, it's probably still there. You know, confidence affects players. We all know that. And, and mistakes creep in, understandably. But the old Butland, if, 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 if he re-emerges, and he's had a couple of good games for us this season when he's had a chance, all day long at 27, has got plenty of time ahead of him. Big difference between him and Gaeta. Gaeta is just about to turn 35. So, you know, whilst he was a cracking signing, Gaeta, he's, he's he's coming towards the twilight end of, of, of his career. And um, perhaps he does just want to go back to Spain. You know, perhaps he just hates the climate. Who knows what's going through his mindset? But if, if that's where he wants to go, good luck to him. But I, I just think Butland can easily feel the number one um, shirt and and for us as Palace fans, be totally confident in his ability and what he's going to do. Um, the only issue lies with um, who backs him up and I think um, I think Hennessy's going to go and, you know, he's, he's, he's not cutting it really for us. He's made so many mistakes. He's done so many bad things for us. Um, you know, he's, he's probably going to probably end up against, you know, at a championship club, perhaps. So we, we probably do need to go out and find another keeper to back Butland up. And Romero at 34. Obviously 34. Jesus. Yeah, it's just, I mean, yeah, perhaps, perhaps the long-term vision is that he does. Uh, we do get a keeper like him in to back Butland up. I don't know. Maybe Gita said that I do want to go. Who knows? You know, he's been a cracking player for us. He's yeah. caught the interest of Man City uh, last season uh, for a brief moment, and you know he's he's made a solid between between the sticks. The only problem has been what's been in front of him because he can't save everything. No, well, I've read a lot of tweets, even in the Wolves game, about people slagging him off for mistakes, and I just thought that guy has saved us more points than he's lost us by a mile. Well, that header. Uh, as soon as that header was met, and it was a free header, I thought that's cool, that's well. that's in the back of the net, and, and he, he's got his hand to it. I mean, he has saved us far more times than I can I can count. Um, he's made a couple mistakes, but then at the end of the day, if the people in front of him are making mistakes, it's hard, it's hard not to be able to save them every time. Yeah, you know, you're not going to do that. I mean, there's world class keepers that have fallen. Back a little bit, like the Gaia. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's he's made loads of mistakes, but it's only what you've got in front of you that makes that confidence and that ability retain itself. And I think we've been so kind of haphazard at the back. We haven't had a partnership like we did last season at the back that's been consistent. We keep losing players to injury. KL got injured. Tompkins has got injured again. Sacco, I mean, it's just a waste of space. When he's when he plays, he's great. And yeah, you're a little bit suspect because he might have a mistake in him, especially with his Cruyff turns and stuff that he messes around with. But he keeps getting injured. So th- there's not been a steady partnership. You know, we've had to pull a defensive midfielder in at the back in Kiate and, and make him our pretty much first choice along with everyone else, whoever is fit and available. Um, and, and and every defender we have got, I mean, you've got Dan, who's 32, you've got Kale, who's 35, you've got Tonkins, who's 30 now, you've got um, Kelly, who's 31, you've got Ward, who's 32, um, you've got PVA, who's 30. We, we need a massive overhaul over, uh, over that back four. Mitchell, for me, next season has to field, field the, the left-back position. He has to be first choice. Um, if indeed we keep him, because I know Arsenal are interested in him. I, I I did read about that, and apparently something's happened, and now they've changed their focus to PVA. I did read, so that's quite interesting. Um, if if they did do that, that might be a good little bit of money for us. I'm not saying that I'd want to see him go, but with what you've been saying, it, it's very worrying to me because we've got a very old squad. Oh, we've it's, got a lot of them out of contract, and and we're not bringing anyone in to fill the holes. So we, if you look <laughs> at it, you, you know every, every single one of the defenders, other than Mitchell, has 
realistically got no sell-on value. Every one of the midfielders, apart from Reader World, Schlup and, and Wilf, um, you know, you could sell Jordan Ayew, you could sell Townsend, you could make a little bit of money there. But McCarthy, he's 30. McCarthy's 32. You got Lucas, 31, I think, or 30 now. Um, there's not a lot of value in that other than Wilf, effectively, and Schlup, but you'd want to keep Schlup almost certainly. Um so we, we do need, we do need a lot of players and it's not easy to do a massive squad overhaul. I, 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 I've been, I've been kind of wrapped on the wrist a few times in, in a couple of Palace groups over my suggestion that we, we need to get hold of a whole, uh, get rid of a whole team and get hold of a whole team. But it's not that easy to do that and you've got to have the money to go out and buy players. So for me, I think there has to be some gold in, 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 the, in the youth. If the under 18s are ripping it up and they look they look top draw by the looks of it, surely a couple of them deserve a chance. I know Drea has been lauded by Hodgson on a number of occasions. Banks has been lauded on a number of occasions. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna give them praise, you're gonna you're gonna really give them some some top um comments like he, he has done. Well, I think there's an argument to say, right. They need to come into the first team fold. You know, not necessarily they might not necessarily start, but at the end of the day, if you're gonna lose a lot of players out of contract, and I I don't see I just don't see who we're gonna renew out of all that. I, the, the the problem for me is that this is not an overnight thing. I think when we did started doing a podcast, what, two years ago? We did a big thing about this, a big thing about players going out of contract, and it's just been left. It's just been like a something you don't want to think about. You put it in the cupboard. You think, oh, I'll come to that later on. I'll come to that later on. And now it, we're just running out of time. All these players are going to be out. Realistically, we could lose, what, 11 players? We could. <laughs> and, and we're not bringing in people. So... What do you do? Like, uh, maybe uh, for you, I know you're bursting to see the youngsters play, but to be honest, I think we've not got much of a choice. Well, uh, the thing is, let's let's just be honest. So far, we've had, we spoke about this last week. We spoke about this before. We've had two two situations that have arose where we've had no choice at all. We couldn't even draft someone in that was injured and give them an injection and ask them to play. We had no choice whatsoever but to bring in Wan Bizaka at the time. We've had no choice but to bring in Mitchell and, and the guy's been brilliant every time he's played. Um, so it, it just it, may, it just feels abundantly clear to me that if you're going to bring some of these kids in, not always guaranteed... You can't sit there and confidently say, oh, we'll bring in this player, we'll bring in that player, and, and they'll perform just as well as the others have. You, you can't say that, but I think 100% hit rate's pretty good so far, to be fair, given the fact that we were forced, we had no choice. Given the fact that because of that, we've come out 50 million better off with Wayne Bezaka's sale, we might struggle to keep Mitchell. I don't know. I mean, if Arsenal are going to come in for him or another club, who knows? But I've always said it, all the while we've got a player, we rejoice while they're in, in the red and blue. I think Parrish has got to take that same approach as he has with Wilf, with with our players now. That, that if Mitchell is going to go, it's got to be money and we've got to have a replacement. And at the minute, if we haven't got any money, we get into the next season and we're still in the Prem, hopefully. We're just looking lightly. Um, have, we got, have we got resources? Have we got money? But the thing is, if we've got 11 players which are, are potentially going to leave us, and I would say you're probably approaching a million pound a week in wages, out of all of them, not quite as much, but not far off. 
there's a big argument to say, isn't it time if we can't afford to go out and spend these mo- these fees, these transfer fees, to start exploring the free transfer market? Because every season that seems to go by, every other club signing players on free transfers, and it's cost them nothing other than wage output. So if, if we've got all of that wage coming free, well, let's invest it properly because we're used to paying that. Let's, let's get some quality players in and there's, there's always players that are available on that basis. So, well, you, look at, you look at Klein. Well, Klein, I mean, at, yes, at 29, he, he's not young. He's not, you know, but he was itching to play football and he's proved that he's earned himself another contract. But even if it's for a year or even if it's for two years, it doesn't matter. You've not paid out any transfer fee and you put, him, need- you put him on a wage that's similar to someone that you, you, you're going to lose. We, we need that time at the minute. Realistically, we, we need a lot of time. Um, pretty much two centre-backs, a left-back, a right-back, a lot of the midfield. I mean, I'll keep I think we're all right for left-back. I think we need... We all say, don't want another midfielder. We don't need any more midfielders, but we probably do if a couple of them are going to leave on a free. Um, contract finishing yeah, but, and stuff. Right. but we need some younger midfielders we mm. we need to be exploring that or or do we give Banks a go do we let him come into the fold do we let Nia Kirby come into the fold I don't know but if, you can't keep saying that these kids can't do it you know there's no there's no proof that they can't do it because we're not even giving them a go we're not even giving them a go in the cups yeah I mean, that, that is, it just seems to be a bit of Jekyll and Hyde with Parrish, doesn't it? He, he wants to bring in a manager who wants to get the youth going and then we do have opportunities to do it and we just don't pull the trigger. Well, the thing is, the, 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 the FA Cup game against Wolves, Ben, that was a prime opportunity, to, you know, because if the feeling is we're not bothered about the Cup, and it clearly, it clearly seems to be the case that Hodgson specifically doesn't really regard the cups at all in any in, in, in any any way. Respectfully, he's just like don't really want to be in it. I'm just going to put aside that just to function the fact that we play got to play the game. Uh, but if we get knocked out, then we get knocked out. I don't really care. But to the fans, to have a cup run, to get to a final, to to possibly win a trophy. I mean, that would be everything for Palace. Yeah, uh, but if if the mentality is don't really care, not really bothered about it, well, you better you might as well just just choose eleven kids and put them out and give them a chance, because those kids would play with passion and pride and give it give their all rather than you know a, a first team squad of peripheral players that are not quite playing every game, just going out there not really caring. But again. In the cup game, we're putting out a sort of B-side and Hodgson comes out and goes, oh, he's, he's trying to let other players that I don't see in the first team break into it. It's just rubbish, isn't it? Because Gyro, every time I see Gyro, he has a good game. Well, you see, so, he, he has a good game. He looks absolute class. But then the next game, he gets dropped. So, so where's your motivation then? Where's your motivation to play this cup game, do really well, to be told, oh, you did really well, but you're not in the first day? I, like I said earlier, I, I'd love to hear what he's got to say as a manager. I'd love to, I'd love to see what he sees because what he sees and what we see seems to be, seems to be a range of different things. I, I, I genuinely don't get it, and. For me, Gyro has to be one of the first names on the team sheet now. Yeah, he, he would boss that midfield and he would hold up play. I, I don't even think he wants to go backwards. Or if he goes backwards, it's to move, to make more space and then go forwards. There, there's something behind it. Um, but I don't know, I don't get it. Hodgson mentioned 38 or 39 points. It was, it was in that ballpark. That that's that's what we're looking to achieve this season. But what? But why? What? But why? 
why are we sitting there when the season starts and saying we're looking at 38, 39 points? What, what, why are we looking at that? Why are we even saying that's what our aim is? Because all you're doing is you're saying to players, look, guys, all we want to do is get the 38, 39 points and be safe. So they're looking and thinking, oh, well, right now, they're probably looking and thinking, well, the boss has said that we need to get the 38, 39 points. That's only another 12, 13 points. That's four wins. That's all we've got to strive for. And that's the key, that's the key thing, Ben. All we've got to strive for. Once we've done but that, it doesn't really matter. Does, does that filter from the top, though? Does that because I I was having a big discussion with a guy on Twitter and, and a lot of the points he was making were, were pretty fair. Is is his boss going to be unhappy with him at the minute the way the way that things are? No, he's brought him in to keep us in the league where we're sat. We look like we're not in danger. So does it does it come from from Parish? Is is the ambition got to be there from him to be like, look, I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with you embarrassing these cups or if you're going to do it then please put out some kids um, why are we not doing better in the league but then you could see his argument to say well I've drawn with Arsenal I've drawn with Tottenham uh, I can't remember the last time we beat Wolves I beat them uh, it's just a catch-22 or it seems like it yeah but the thing is even if it is coming from Parish, Parish needs to sit there and think long and hard about this if I keep telling the boss of our team, for, and this is the fourth season that Hodgson's had, that all you need to do is make sure you keep safe, that's all he's thinking about. Why don't you change the status quo a little bit and say, right, listen, I want you to aim for top 10. Because the thing is, at the moment, and it's probably why we haven't seen Hodgson sacked, because he's given him a remit of, we need to be safe. And we're on track for that. Yeah. So he can't be seen to be sacking him, even though we've only had, prior to the Wolves game, one win in 10, which is relegation form. He, he, he can't make that decision because he doesn't want to look, he doesn't want to look bad to the Palace fans either. You know, don't, but, don't forget Parrish is, you know, I don't know the man, none of us know the man, but the way he comes across is quite sort of, you know, he loves himself a little bit kind of thing. Um, and at the end of the day, he can't be seen to be looking bad to the Palace fans if he sacks the man that has been Palace for and through all his life kind of thing. I, I can't remember the fan base being that much behind sacking a manager. If I'm honest, if I, if I go on Twitter and, and filter through, it is just full of hodging out. And th- there has to be some sort of uh, sorriness towards him because if his boss has said to him all you got to do is stay in the league power that's what we're getting thing is though there's also so many people that are, are backing Hodgson still and saying that he should stay saying that he should he should be here for at least another season because he's the right man for the job but playing that football playing that way and instill, installing that into the players if I owned a club, it don't matter whether it be Palace or, or, or whether it be anyone else, I, I wouldn't accept that as an owner. I'd be looking at it thinking, this this football's horrific. You know, we're in the Premier League. We're in the yeah. top league in the world. We should we should be showcasing ourselves. We should be pushing. We should be we should be trying to better what we did the season before. And we don't. We just go, well, you know, if we stay up, it's great. And that's all we need to do is maintain that. But sooner or later, if we don't invest and we don't get the right philosophy and the right manager in place, we can't, Hodgson can't keep going on forever. You know, sooner or later, we've got to make that change. We've got to say, right, let's bring someone in and give but someone time. People moan about big Sam's football, but I, I, I much prefer that football, to be honest. Oh, I, I liked it. I liked having yeah. nice this football. I don't get, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't want him as manager if if um, we hadn't had him before when we got rid of Hodgson and we wanted new manager. Yes, I know he'd keep us solid. I know he would he would he would probably keep us up. I think he's got a, a real difficult job at West Brom to do that. I, don't, I can't see him. I think this could be the first time. It's it's the opposite, but 
the football under him was simple. He looked at the players, he looked at their strengths, he looked at their weaknesses, and he thought, how can I play to these, these this, this team strengths? How can I get the maximum output out of these players? And I don't think Hodgson does that. Hodgson's just, oh, you're my mate this week. You deserve a chance. And then a few games later, he's like, well, you've not had a chance for a while. Maybe I'll give you a go. But the tactic's still the same. It's incessantly the same. The mentality's so, incessantly the same. It seems so risky that that that, that team that we put out against Wolves did. It's. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but it was a must-win game. And we, okay, we did win it. But looking at that team sheet, I was like, "Whoa, what's what's going on? I don't think this is our strongest eleven by a long shot." How, how you you unless Ben took it, Ben took it out a, a knock. How how's he been dropped? No, it was, it was it was it was really odd in my opinion. I I didn't understand it. Um, and you know, going back to Allardyce briefly, um, Ben Teke on the last man wasn't asked to drop deep and hold the ball up like Hodgson does with him. Allardyce just said, "Just stick on the last man." He then said to Wilf, he then said to Balassi at the time, "Just get the crosses in, get it up to the big man, cross it in." And he'll get on the end of it. And 17 goals later, you've got the output out of a striker that you need. You need someone to be knocking in 15, 20 goals a season. Under Hudson, the fellow's got to drop 20, 25 yards deep to hold the ball up to flick it on until who should be him. And I know we said this last week about Kiate should be in the midfield to knock it onto him, perhaps. But when we do get the ball, we cross it in. Benteke's not there. He's hardly ever there. Because he's having to drop deep and he ain't got the pace to get up there and get in on the last man so that he can basically put it in the net. Just, I just think odson has got it all wrong with, with the way he's getting the players to play the way that they do. Because you don't understand them as people and the, and the strengths that they've got. But that makes things even more frustrating because we look at him and we know if we... I, I have no doubt that he'd get double figures if we put crosses in. But... Even the match against Wolves, it was like cross after cross after cross. And it was like, they're all tiny players that want the ball in IU, wants it at feet. Bashway wants it at feet or in behind. So why are we crossing the ball? I don't, a, I don't understand. It, it really makes zero sense the way that we play. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I did think that we would, I did think that we'd look at acquisition a, a lot more deeply uh, this month, given the window being open. Yeah, Mateta, you know, everyone's lauding him. He's, he's, he's come with high regard. I, I don't know a lot about the guy. I honestly don't. And he may well turn out to be an absolute coup signing him. But I am genuinely surprised, given the number of contracts that are up in the summer, that we haven't gone out for, you know, other players. I mean, I've just seen that uh, Preston's young... Oh, he's young, he's 25, but he's young in the scheme of things. Liverpool looking at signing this this kiddie uh, from, from Preston, uh, central defender. Um, given the fee that's been spoken about there, I think it's quite small. Again, I, I'm surprised that we're not looking at, you know, leagues like the Championship, you know, and buying some of these players to, to invest in, in into the future because... I, I don't see the recruitment team that we've got going out and, like you said, wholesale changes and buying loads of players because we we take so long when we do things anyway as it is. Yeah, I, I just it it's worrying. I I don't think a lot of fans see the bigger picture or they don't want to see the bigger picture. It's like we'll wait, we'll wait till the end of the season. We'll see what happens then. But it's it needs addressing now, really. Is a thing for you, mate. Does, does, does Hodgson actually know his best team? I don't think he does. Well, after that Wolves game, I'd have to say no, mate. I, I really would. I just, but I, I thought Bashway didn't have a great game. I thought he gave the ball away a lot. And you're just you're changing it as well. You're you're putting other players in the team. All right, yeah, they train together, but they're not used to playing on the pitch against someone else. And, and I, I think at times it showed. There was a lot of naivety with the ball. 
And it was like, what am I going to do next? And it's, and, and you're watching it and it's so frustrating. You're like, come on, come on, just get hold of the game and just, and just keep going for it. And that's the thing you're talking about frustration, Ben, it's, it, and, and there's a bit of irony with that. <laughs> Cause if you look at our next fixture, <laughs> It's Newcastle, and yeah, they had a fantastic win at the weekend, uh, one that I didn't personally expect them to win, uh, and fair play to them. Uh, but given how Newcastle have played this season, and they you know, they, they deserve to beat us uh, in the reverse fixture, um, the majority of their games have been just, a, just as dull and lacking in ambition as ours. Mm. So... <laughs> I'm just concerned about Tuesday of how mind numbing it's going to be. Uh, we, we might show up. We might. It might be the polar opposite. We might. We might have an absolute stonk, and I hope we do. But it's. Um, I think the only thing that's going to go in our way for us on Tuesday is the fact it's away because we seem to have a bit more, a bit more ambition when we're away. Yeah. Oh. Well. Like, like I said earlier, I just hope it's that injection of confidence where we're like, look, we know we played bad, but let's put that behind us. All that mattered was the three points, where, which realistically I, I get from a lot of people. That is true. There's no arguing that fact that, that all that matters is the three points. Uh, if we played like that again and beat Newcastle, I'd probably have a little grumble. But again, you can't, you can't move because the three points. But it's just like you, you just want to see that level of football. I want us to play a level of football where a Damari Gray comes up for two million and he goes, I want to go to Palace. Well, I mean, if you look at our, our next fixture, so I'm just looking at this. Um, we've got Newcastle away. We've got Leeds away. We've got Burnley at home. And then we've got Brighton away. And then we've got Fulham at home. So these five games, this series of five games could be absolutely pivotal in terms of our season um, because once we've got those games out of the way we've then got Spurs we've got West Brom uh, we've got Man United Everton and Chelsea um, I think three real well four out of five games will be extremely tough and and that's no disrespect to the first five games I've mentioned your Phillips and your Brightons and stuff like that I mean obviously beating Brighton has to happen or, or at least not losing to him has to happen. Um, but I think Leeds will be quite a tough game, given the fact that if they turn up, but we have got the confidence we beat them 4-1. So, you know, it's a catch-22 in terms of uh, in terms of that fixture. But Newcastle and Burnley, I mean, you've got to be going for that, those games. You've really got to be pushing yourself to get probably again, again, you're talking, nine points you're... out of 15 at least. You're talking about a team that's already beaten us. Um, Newcastle, I, I don't, I don't know that we're going to do very well against. Um, I just, how many points do you think we're going to get out of five games? Uh, nine or ten. I think we're going to struggle. I think Burnley is going to be a tough game. Newcastle, tough game. Leeds, we turned them over. They want to point and prove. Um, I mean, even Fulham, to a certain degree. Well, Fulham have been playing really well. I mean, they've not had they've not had the luck. They've got Loftus Cheek. He's been playing brilliantly. I, I really wish we'd gone in for him as a loan. Well, again, why can't we attract him? He played at Palace. He knows what we're about. He knows the, the team. I so think, where is... I think the fee that was mentioned, I think Chelsea was saying they wanted like 40 million for him or something ridiculous like that. But if, if they're going to loan him out, then why are we not snapping the loan? Well, it, that's what I'm saying. You know, I, w- I probably would have rather have had him over back shy. Yeah. But, well, we, you know, hindsight's we a wonderful thing, isn't it, at the end of the day? No, certainly. I just those those next five games. Um, I just I'm really hoping we turn up, mate. I really, I'm I'm worried, really worried. 
Yeah, well, um, let's just hope let's just hope we turn up at least in the next game. It'd be good to get a couple wins under a belt in a row. You know, the, there's a there's an argument to say it's boosted our confidence beating Wolves. So they were a tough side to beat, and it was a great win. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to think that you know we could probably give Mateta uh, a chance in 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 the game against Newcastle at the very least. <laughs> Well, for me, he's got to start, really. Let's, let's, let's show some ambition. Let's, let's show that, that we, we watched the tapes last week and and it's not good enough. OK, we got the win and, and they stand in front of the cameras and they say, oh, we deserve to win that. Um, but I just I just want to see more, mate. The, the passion level, you can argue, was, was a lot better in, in the Wolves game. But I just, again, just just keep building up. Let's just keep the levels going, and uh, I, I keep saying it. I'm just, I'm really worried, mate. I, I think Newcastle coming off of that win, what was it Everton? They just beat. Uh, yes. I mean, that was at Everton as well, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that that'll give him a lot of confidence as well, naturally. But we, we Gyro's got to play in that midfield. We need the, the, the creativity in midfield is, is what's stopping us. And you hit the nail on the head because we've got two CDMs. We, we need to drop one. We need to put someone in there that, that's willing to take the ball and play it forward. Yeah. And, and at, at the minute, we're just, we're just happy to sit behind the ball. And that, that, that's a great point to, to end the show with because we're, we're running out of time now, Ben. Um, so just going to finish it off with um, just a, a note of what, what do you think the score is going to be against Newcastle? Why not? <laughs> I'll take a draw, but I'd like to hope that we, we sneak a 1-0 win. Or any win, but 1-0 I think will scrape a win. Um, but you've been listening to Eagles on Air through the Sport and Air and Stream. Uh, I'm Steve, this is Ben, and uh, we look forward to coming to you in, in next week's show um, and talking more Palace. Thanks, Ben. Take care, guys. So, thanks, mate. Bye bye.